we bring them in. I've checked that what we do fits in with their government guidelines. And um, and, our, and ours does, because obviously I've read, I've read articles around that. It just has fabric in it and elastic. So that's very easily washable and very easy to to reuse, you know, rather than ones with clips in or bits of Hoover bags and stuff like that. So we've just kept it simple. Um, and we can also um, enlarge it and, and make it smaller. So therefore we've made, we now have a men's fitting mask, a female, um, a child and a toddler. cloth face covering is much more comfortable it's much uh, m more uh, you're, you're much more able to wear it for a, a decent length of time so one of the problems with medical masks is that they they're made of sort of cardboard and paper and bits of plastic and they're itchy and they were never designed to be worn uh, for a long period of time mask will vent from the side and from the top and the bottom, mostly the top, uh, what you're trying to prevent going out in front of you. So instead of, in, if, sort of not infecting necessarily, but in, instead of uh, uh, your breath being projected forward, it's just projected out sideways or out at the top and to the person behind you. A lot of effort is put into making sure that the right mask is picked for the right person, that it fits properly, and that the person is, tra is, is trained to uh, remove it and put it on properly and to fit it properly. Now, that might be a bit over the top for general use, but that sort of information does need to be made available for the general population. You can put your hand in front of your face and breathe out on it and cough on it and it gets wet. And that's because what comes out of your mouth is wet droplets. But if you go a foot away or two feet away, uh, the droplets don't hit anymore because they've evaporated. So the idea is that what you need is something that stops the droplets. Uh, and because droplets are quite big, they're very effectively stopped by cloth. If I were to take a piece of this shirt and put it over my mouth and then sneeze all over you, do you really think that's going to protect you? I mean, how confident are people with this? Anybody watching this should ask themselves the question, would they feel safe in a supermarket queue, even at a two, minute di two meter distance, uh, stood next to somebody with COVID-19 who is coughing and spluttering, it, spluttering everywhere, who perhaps thinks that they're safe because they're wearing a mask or they're, 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 they're not at risk of infecting other people. I'd suggest that that's 
not really a wise attitude to take. It's not what I would take and would advise to my friends or family. Wearing face coverings as source control is not the same as doctors and nurses having to stop absolutely every viral particle or bacteria getting at them from infected patients. Uh, it's much more kind of um, mathematical than that. If statistically we can reduce the risk of this virus getting out into the population when you're standing in a supermarket queue, instead of a thousand particles floating around, there's only about 10, uh, we will actually reduce quite a lot the transmission of this virus. People have got to remember there is no magic number, no magic distance at which you suddenly become safe. It's really just a, a politician's decision as to where they draw the line.